Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillah al-Ali al-Makan, al-Rafi' al-Bunyan, al-Aziz al-Sultan, al-Mun'im al-Mannan, summa al-Salatu wa al-Salamu ala khayr al-Anam, al-Abd al-Mu'ayyad wa al-Rasul al-Musaddad, abu al-Qasim al-Mustafa Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear brothers and sisters, we have another night, another tawfiq to come to Majlis of Abu Abdullah alayhi salam and inshallah to continue our discussion on the inspiration of Abu Abdullah alayhi salam for free men. Uh, up to here we mentioned that for the heart of man there could be different levels from the level of stones to the level of angels and higher than the level of angels is the level of human being and that is to be recognized by the heart and the heart which is filled with the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to continue our discussion in order to reach to that level of humanity, we have to bear in mind, now I'm going to share with you two very important rules. Two very important rules are going to be important in what we can achieve. The first one is a hadith from Amir al-Mu'maneen alayhi salam. Imam says, az Unvan ul batin. Az zahir, unvan ul batin. It means that what comes as appearance in your deeds, in our deeds, in our actions, in our lives, what we show from ourselves is a sign of what we have inside. If there is a pot and this pot has some liquid inside, the leakage of this pot is what inside the pot. The heart of any of us has collected a saving and the saving of the heart is coming out. In Farsi, we have a proverb saying, "As kuze burun haman taravat ke darust." Any pot has the leakage of what it has inside. You cannot expect a pot containing milk to come out honey. Impossible. Adhahero unvanul batin. The second rule. I remember in December when I was here, I referred to this and I talked a few minutes about it. The verse of Quran, Surah Al-Muddathir, Kullu nafsin bima kasabat rahimah. Any soul is hostage of what it has acquired, what it has earned. We have some earnings, we have some savings in our hearts. And now we are a hostage of what we have earned, what we have gathered, what we have collected. Putting these two rules together, first, if I want to know myself, if, I'm, if I want to know who am I, I have to look at what I am showing in action. unvanul <laughs> batin. Our reactions, our actions in different times is an indicator of what we have collected inside. You, you might have happened to have such experience that sometimes you say that, you do something, then you say, I didn't expect myself to do that. It means even you don't know what you have saved inside in 
a specific occasion, you have a reaction that even surprises you yourself. That is what you have collected. The second point is that if you, so if you want to know who you are, you have to look at what's coming out of the heart. If, I, if you want to change it, then you have to look what you have saved. You are what you have saved, and you are the captive of what you have saved. So if you want to have good outcoming from your heart, then you have to change what you have saved. Otherwise, you are the hostage. Quran says, Kullu nafsin bima kasabat rahina. You are the hostage of what you have collected in the heart. When you look at the life of people, people are captives and hostages of what they have collected. According to that, they react. According to that, they speak. According to that, they think. Quran says in Surah Al-Qalam that on the day of judgment, when the hardships of the day of Qiyamah is removed, then Allah says, يُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى sujood." The people, some, some people are commanded to do sajda. وَلَا يَسْتَتِيُونَ But they cannot do that. They cannot do the sajda. When Allah commands them now, prostrate before me, they cannot do sajda. Then Allah says in the coming verse, in the next verse, Allah says in dunya they had the same story. We commanded them they were sound, they were healthy. They, they were commanded in dunya to do such that they didn't do. They didn't do. They have collected something in dunya while they were salem, while they were healthy, they were sound. They didn't do such that now they cannot do. They cannot do that. Because they are captive of what they have collected. This is the same in psychology, you know. Sometimes you see some kids, you know, chewing their nails. So sometimes parents, you know, they, they say the kid has panic or anxiety. So uh, sometimes they, they say that we should, you know, rub pepper so it is spicy, they cannot chew it. This is wrong. There is something inside. The problem is inside. The child is captive of what is inside. The soul. You have to solve the one inside. So this is only a symptom of what there is inside. If you want your daughter to have hijab, you cannot force her. You should give her good savings in the heart. Then the outcome of that good saving will be hijab. Otherwise, if you force the kid to have hijab, then in the future she will have worse reactions. Because she doesn't have the wealth inside to keep hijab. In the army of Umar Asad, Umar Asad himself, and those people, they have bad savings. So they, re they react in a bad way. I said, the savings of Hur is different. Hur has gathered different things in the heart. So there is a big challenge. He's in a big challenge inside, and finally the good side overcomes the other. We had one of our famous Urafa Mirza, Ismail Dulabi Rahmatullah, he passed away some years ago. He said that now it's years that I have, I have left Allah alone, but he's not letting me alone. I am not going for him, but he's not letting me alone. He's coming after me. He's about to say that the saving in the heart is so strong that if I want to go away from Allah, Allah will not let me alone. The heart is so attached to Allah that I cannot live without him. So he has a good savings. They were students of famous Arif, Mirza Javad Agaya Ansari Hamedani Rahmatullah Alayhim. He had a specific school of Irfan. In Irfan, he had a specific way of love, mahabba. Contrary to the school of Mirza Ali Aghaya Qazi, 
and his followers, students like Ayatollah Bahjad, they had the school of Riyadh mortification. So the school of Agha Qazi was that you have to purify the heart, go through specific rituals and a'mal, and gradually you will come to fall in love with Allah. They are called Salike Majzub. Wayfarer, which will fall in love. First, you have to be wayfarer, go through the process. Then gradually, when you purify the heart, you will come to fall in love with Allah. But the school of Mirza Jawad Aghaya Ansari was majzub salik. First, he made you in love with Allah. Then this love didn't let you go. Then when you were in love, you couldn't go. You couldn't run away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it, this is the savings. Very important rules. What comes out of your heart is what you have made, and then what you have made makes, keeps you as captive. You cannot run away from it. Then it manages your life. Our reactions in different occasions, whatever comes to us, the decisions we make, all these things, are related to these two rules. So the question might be that, what should we do to have a better heart? So the answer is clear. We have to have better savings. We have to increase the savings in the heart. We have to give more value to the savings in the heart. Then when it is progressed, developed, then we will have better appearances. We will have better showings from that saving. We will have better outcomes. We will have better manifestations. If we want to classify all these elements which are involved, we can collect them in four major things. If we consider the heart of man as an ocean, we can say that there are four major rivers flowing into this ocean. And at the end, our heart is the outcome of these four rivers. We do so many things, but at the moment of death, we don't know which side is going to overcome. Do we with the people of hell or people of heaven? Sometimes you, need, you see that one behavior, one act of us can destroy worship of 70 years. So what is going to stay there at the end is very important. So these four major channels of income, if we want to name them, the first one are our choices, the decisions we make. Second, the relations we have. Third, the acts, behaviors that we have. And the fourth, I will tell you, it, it went out of my mind. So the first one are the choices, the decisions we make. The choices that we have, the decisions we make. It includes whatever we do in the life, whatever, I mean, the choices that we have from the food that we eat, what you choose as the food. There is a famous hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that it, again, it's a kind of a lifestyle. This hadith itself is a lifestyle. That the Prophet said, لا تأكلوا مآكل أعدائي Allah says, this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't eat the food of my enemy. Do not dress the dress code of my enemy. Do not stay, settle in the house of my enemy. Then you will turn into my enemies. The hadith is about to say that when you accept the codes, the lifestyle of my enemy, 
when you live according to their values, according to their codes, it's going to impact you. It's going to affect you. So, Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam said in the hadith, in the khutbah al-qasi'ah, the Imam said, innama aqara naqata salih. The Imam said, innama yajma'u al-nas as-sakhatu wal-riza. What is society? What gathers people together? What makes people together? It is people's likes and dislikes. The collection of your likes and dislikes makes you to be in a community, to be with a person, to be with an imam. Then imam made an example. He said, One person killed the camel of Saleh. فَعَمَّمَهُمُ اللَّهُ بِالْعَزَابِ لَمَّا عَمَّمُوهَا بِالْرِضَى But Allah punished the whole city because the whole city were pleased with what one person did. فَعَقَرُوهَا فَأَسْبَهُوا نَادِمِينَ And Allah says, فَعَقَرُوهَا All the city killed the camel because all were pleased with the act of a person. So in social acts, in social movements, you know, where your heart goes, it is as if you are doing it yourself. The private act is not like that. In the private act, you are very safe. If you decide to go to drink alcohol, Nauzubillah. Nauzubillah, somebody was under the influence of shaitan, decided to go to drink alcohol. Got into the car, driving to the shop. It is off, it is closed. He had the intention to go, to buy, to drink. But he was lucky, it was closed. You know, you had the intention in your personal life to drink. According to fiqhi perspective, you didn't commit a sin. No, you went inside, you bought it, you brought him, you drank. Then it turned out that it's not alcohol. Accident. It turned out that it was not alcohol. You didn't drink alcohol. Again, according to many fuqaha, you didn't commit a sin because you didn't drink alcohol. Some may believe that this is a fi'lul qalb, haram, but majority believe that it's not haram. They call it tajarri. means that you have the audacity to go against Allah, but you didn't commit the haram act. So you see, in the personal life, when it is my personal issue, even I decided to do something haram. I did, it turned out not to be haram. Many of Allah believe it's not haram. You didn't do the haram act. They say you have khubs zati, not khubs fi'li. Means that it shows that the person has a bad nature. But the fail, the act itself is not haram. This is the personal life. But when it comes to the social life, Somebody did something in Joburg. You're not even there. But you are pleased with their deed. It is as if you have done it yourself. And it makes sense, you know, because in the social sense, if somebody does something, they know that, you know, people are going to support me. If they feel that they are going to be alone, people are going to condemn them, then many of them may not dare to do that. They do some acts because they know that the, the public is going is to support me. They're going to stay with me. So the decisions we make are important. These are one side of what makes us what we are. There are so many examples we can bring. Sometimes you happen, you bring the argument, haq, kalam al haq, to the person, they don't accept. They, they try to be difficult. I remember I was delivering lectures somewhere, there were people putting their fingers into their ears, not to hear. Not to hear. 
So what excuse you have before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You can I say that no, we were majority. We are so, we are so. Quran says this verse is very strong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ جِئْتُمُونَا فُرَادَا كَمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةِ When you die, you come to me alone. It's you and me. It's you and me. وَلَقَدْ جِئْتُمُونَا فُرَادَا You alone. You cannot say we. I said, who? You are alone. In this dunya, you can say we, we, we. There you are alone. كَمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةِ when you were born, when you were created, you were alone. You will die alone. And those people, you thought that they are supporting you. They are having your back. Nobody is with you. Nobody is with you. It's you and the truth. It's you and the truth. So the worst thing in someone's life is to show difficulty against the truth. The moment you become difficult with the truth, you have no excuse. So the decisions we make are very important. Another element, there is a lot to be mentioned, but we are short for time, I have to just wrap it up. <clears throat> the second element is the relations we have. Their connections, their relations we make in the life, again, this is part of makes us what we are, and then we will be the hostage of that. And these connections in the society could be with different parts, with different people. The wife that you choose is going to make a big impact on your character and your personality. That's why the first, the most important element in the wife, in the husband, should be what deserves your perfection. People sometimes look, you know, the, the, the girl is in a, from a rich family. He has a, you know, strong father. This, this has a very severe impact on the heart. These are big sins, you know, sometimes we think that these are not thin sins. These are big sins if somebody decides the life based on these quotes. Hadith says, when you see a rich person, you respect him because he is rich, you already lost one third of your iman. One third of free iman is gone when you respect the person because he is rich. That's why in Ziyah, in Dua of Imam Zainullah Abedin alayhi salam, Imam asks Allah, one of the things he asks, As'aluka hubbal masakin. I ask you to put the love of poor people in my heart. Because your animal side, the animal heart of you will not love the relation with poor. Poor has nothing. If you want to be with them, sometimes they may come and beg you. They may come and ask you. They're not going to give anything to you. So it is the human side of you going towards them. So you see, to love masakin, to love the poor. So to love, to have your heart directed to somewhere that is against your animality. The friends that we have, the friends that we make. Quran says, people on the day of judgment, they say, Ya Laytani. Ya Laytani. Ittakhaztuma ar rasule sabila. Oh Allah, I wish if I had made a friendship with the Prophet. If I had a connection to the Prophet. In another verse, they say, I wish I didn't make friendship. I wouldn't have made friendship with such a person. That person spoiled me. My friend spoiled me. Rumi says, Manishin bautu se ablah. 
که به ما نیزه چونین ره توز مردان خدا جو صفت جان و جهان را He says don't sit with, poor, uh, with uh, insane people because they spoil your mind sit with the men of God they will show you the true sense of man and the world they give you the true picture of man and the universe sit with the person who shows you the true true human being the hadith that Masih salam said they asked with whom we should sit he said man yudhakkirukumullah ru'yatuh the one that when you sit with him he reminds you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so these connections are very important sometimes a friend plants a seed in your heart you get the fruit 30 years later <coughs> recite the salawat please Janab Zuhair, who is one of the shuhada in Karbala, he says, many years ago, this is narrated by Abu Mekhnaf. You know, Abu Mekhnaf is one of the first people who wrote Mak Maqtal. He, 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 he saw those people who were present in the event of Karbala. So Abu Mekhnaf, he says, Sami'atu min dulham bint Amr zawjatu Zuhair. I hear this story. From the wife of Zuhair, Dulham, that Zuhair said, years ago we were in jihad, in in the uh, by the coast, the coast of uh, Caspian Sea, north of Iran, in a place called Balanjar. He says, I was there. Our commander was Salman bin Rabi'at al Bahili. So we were victorious. We got lots of booties in that war. So I was very happy of what we earned. Then Salman saw that I'm so happy. He told me, you're happy? I said, yes. It was a great achievement. Then he says, Salman, our commander, told me, لو أدركت سيدة شباب أهل الجنة فكن أشد فرحا بالقتال معه. If you had the chance, if you had the chance to see a day that سيد شباب أهل الجنة needs help, if you could help him, then you have to be much more happier than what you are. So you see, the seed was planted in the heart of Zuhair some years ago, maybe two, three decades. Ago, by a good friend, by Salman bin Rabi'at al-Bahili, the great companion. Zuhair may, may even, he might have forgotten that, but all of a sudden, when he comes to see Abu Abdullah salam, that suggestion from Salman comes forth. So a friend can change your life. As I said, these do's and don'ts. Imam alayhi salam said, إِنَّمَا يَجْمَعُ النَّاسَ السَّخَةُ وَالْرِزَى What makes you of a community is your likes and dislikes. Your likes and dislikes are very related to those people you sit with them. They decide what is good for you. Those codes of life that you consider them to be good. Your lifestyle, the way you dress up, the way that you eat, the way that you... Live is very related to those people you are in communication with. If you are going to dress a specific dress, you know that I cannot go to some people. If I want to go to them, I have to change my dressing. So you see, our connections, our relations with people, it impacts us. And these are influential in what we are. The third one are our thoughts, are our thinkings. What we think, what we learn, the books we read, the data we gather, majalis we participate. So the 
Theoretical achievements also have impact on us. So it is important to strengthen ourselves with healthy, strong concepts that strengthens Iman and a correct way of life in us. And the fourth one, as I said, are the acts, behaviors. Now acts could be Jawarahi or Jawanahi, the acts of the heart, the acts of the body. That inshallah I will refer to them in the coming session. <clears throat> so these elements, then all together, they make what we have saved, the saving that we have in the heart, and that saving will make us what we are, and we are captive of what we have collected. So I cannot have bad achievements and to expect a specific outcome from this heart. It will not work. We come to Majlis of Abu Abdullah alayhi salam. We like to cry. We like to have a good feeling, but it doesn't happen. We go to Mecca. We don't see that, that something that we expected to be. Because our being is ma'asum, is infallible. You cannot lie to your soul. You cannot lie to your body. If you are diabetes, if you are suffering from diabetes, and you are going to eat, you know, I don't know, 10 cookies, biscuits, and to say, no, inshallah, nothing happens. The body is ma'asum, is infallible. It will react to it. Immediately it will react to it. You cannot cheat. You cannot lie the body. If you are suffering from high blood pressure, you cannot eat too much salt and expect that, inshallah, nothing will happen. The same is with the soul. Then bad income, bad actions, bad thoughts, bad relations, bad choices in the life, and then to expect the good things to happen. So, if we want to have the hearts dedicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we want the heart to be with Abu Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam, we have to look at those four corridors, those four channels. We have to protect them. We have to filter them. Something that I'm listening as music, watching as movie, reading as book, Whatever I see, whatever I hear, these are things that make my character. So it is, it is one of the worst things in this way just to give chance to yourself. You know, we always come to give chance to ourselves. Inshallah, next time, next week, from next year, still I have time. As we've, we just delay it. We just give other chances to ourselves. But each time it's happening, it's getting difficult to stop it. Rumi brings the analogy of a person who wanted to uproot a tree. He says, the man, there was a bad tree in the yard. He wanted to uproot it. He said, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. And then Rumi says, he didn't understand that every day you are getting older and you're decreasing in power and that tree is getting strong in the roots. When it was young and you were young, you could uproot it easily. But when you get old and it gets strong, then it's impossible to uproot it. So these majalis of Abu Abdullah salam, should be in a way that to help us to go into that direction, then inshallah we will see that Majlis of Hussein inshallah will awaken us. Inshallah about Amalul Jabanihi, I will talk about it tomorrow and how Imam al Hussein salam, can have the impact on our hearts. Tonight is the night of the great companion and the great son of Abu Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam, Aliyun al-Akbar. 
the shaheed that his shahada is very difficult, is very heavy on Abu Abdullah alayhi salam. Sheikh Jafar al-Shushtari rahmatullah alayhi once he went to a majlis and said, people, I want to recite tonight a rosa to Maqtal al-Husayn. I want to recite Maqtal al-Husayn. After the lecture, he recited Shahada of Ali Yun al-Akbar. Then people said, uh, Sheikh, you forgot you were supposed to recite Maqtal al-Husayn. He said, I did. You didn't understand. I recited Maqtal al-Husayn. Hussein passed away. Hussein died beside the body of Ali Yun al-Akbar. <coughs> Hussein is in Ziyar, you say, al-maqtul al-mazbuh. He is mazbuh, he was beheaded, but maqtul, he says, he was maqtul, he died beside Ali Yun al-Akbar. <coughs> you know, we, we said, and you have heard that when Shuhada were about to go to the battlefield, Imam alayhi salam didn't accept easily. They had to beg to get permission. The shaheed that Abu Abdullah easily, when he came, said, you can go, is Ali Yan al-Akbar. He wanted to do his great sacrifice for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but this is not easy. This is not easy. When Ali Yan al-Akbar was about to go, Imam alayhi salam, you have heard that Imam said, Qad baraza ilayhim. Oh Allah, look, a young man, shabun, qad baraza ilayhim shabun, ashbahun nas, khalqan wa khulqan wa mantiqan bi rasulik. Oh Allah, I am sending someone who was the, the most similar person in Ahlul Bayt in, in his face, in his Mantiq means the way of speaking or the logic of speaking. And also in his akhlaq to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa You know, the face, your creation is not in your hand. Face is something that Allah gives you. We have that three people were very, uh, they looked like Rasulullah. One was Lady Fatima to Zahra sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The other one, Ali Yun al-Akbar. And the third one is Imam al-Mahdi, jalallah ta'ala khalilu al-Shari. But Ashbahun Nas Khulgan is very important. Ashbahun Nas Khulgan, Quran says, Inna kalla ala khulqin azim. This is the khulq of prophethood, khulq of isma. Ashbahun Nas Khulgan, the closest person in akhlaq. So this is something like Isma. That's why when Ali Yun al-Akbar was about to go to the battlefield, Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam recited Ayatul Nubuwa. Inna Allah astafa Adam wa Nuh wa Ala Ibrahim wa Ala Imran ala al-Awlameen. This is the Ayatul Nubuwa. Imam Rahmatullah alayhi says, according to this verse, it shows that if Ali Yun al-Akbar was to be alive, it could be Imam after Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam. So he's not a simple son just to be a relation of a son and a father relation. There are three ziyarat for Ali, Ali Yun al-Akbar. I just want to recite one of them to see in this ziyara by Shahida Abbal. Also, Ibn Qulabai mentions in Kamala ziyarat. There is another ziyara which is longer. This one is the shortest ziyara. I just recite some parts of it. I recite this ziyara, inshallah, all together. We have the intention of Ziyarah to Ali and Al-Akbar to do Ziyarah and also to see the position of this son of Abu Abdullah Al-Husayn alayhi salam. Shaheed Abbal says, Summa amza ila dharihi Ali ibn Al-Husayn. Go towards the zarih. Waqif alayhi. You stay before him. Waqul and say, As-salamu alayki ayyuhal siddiq. At-tayyibu al-zaki. Al-habib. Al-habib, inshallah, if I had time I will talk about the Habib. Habib is a great position. You can, you can be muhib, you can be lover, but to be Habib is not easy. To be beloved is not easy. Al-Muqarrab, wa'abnu rayhanat, wa'abnu rayhanat Rasulillah. You are the son of Imam al-Husayn, rayhanat Rasulillah. As-salamu alayka min shaheedin muhtasabin wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ma akrama maqawmuka wa ashrafa munqalabuk. 
أشهد لقد شكر الله سأيك وأجزل سبابك وألحقك بالزربة العالية حيث الشرف كل الشرف وفي الغرف كما من عليك من قبل الله favored you before than this وجعلك من أهل البيت الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا يا So you are included in that verse. So this person is not a simple person. Ali Yun al-Akbar is not a simple person. Salabatullah alayka wa rahmatullah wa rizwanahu. Then you address in Ali Yun al-Akbar, you say, Fashfa'a, ayyuha sayyidu al-Tahir. I want your shafa'a. Ila rabbika fi hatta al-athqal al-zahari. If you be my shafi, to remove all the burdens from my shoulders, from my heart, to enlighten my heart. So, Ali Yun al-Akbar has such a position to ask shafa'a for him. So, Ali Yun al-Akbar has such a position. That's why... Maqatil say when he decided to go, Abu Abdullah alayhi salam said, go, but nazara nazrata min. Imam looked at him, but as a person who has lost hope in him, disappointed. Imam alayhi salam said, before going to, to the battlefield, go to the ladies of Haram. Ali Yun al-Akbar came to the ladies. Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam said to the ladies, Tazavadu men. This is the last time you are seeing him. So if you want to hug him, if you want to kiss him, this is the last chance of you to see Ali Yun al-Akbar. This is not easy. Ladies gathered around him crying, Ya Ali, irham ghurbatana. Ali, we are lonely. Do not go to the battlefield. We are alone. How can you let your sisters, your aunties, alone among these enemies? These are the things that breaks the bones of any man. This is not easy. These choices are not easy. You have to have so strong heart to have such decisions in that moment. Ali Yun al-Akbar came to the battlefield. He fought a lot and killed a lot. Then he came back after a while of fighting to Imam al Hussein alayhi salam and he said, Ya Abba, Al-Atashuqad qatalani wa thiqlul hadida ajhadani. Oh Father, I am so thirsty and the weapon is so heavy in my hand. Our Rafa, they say that Ali Yun al-Akbar, he knew that Imam al Hussein doesn't have any water. So when he said, I am thirsty, he didn't mean that give me water. Imam alayhi salam, by the power of wilaya that he had, Imam didn't let Ali Yun al-Akbar to be stricken by the enemy. So actually, Ali Yun al-Akbar was telling Imam that remove that eyes of wilaya from me. Let me go and receive shahada. They had a farewell, Abu Abdullah, for the last time, hugged Ali Yun al-Akbar. They kissed each other. This time, Ali Yun al-Akbar went to the battlefield. According to some narrations, they, they threw an arrow into his neck, into the throat of Ali Yun al-Akbar, actually, into the throat and the blood running from his throat. He lost the control. He lost the helmet, and they strike in the head. He fall on the horse. The blood splashing on the eyes of the horse, horse quite wild, panicked, ran towards the enemy. Ali was <laughs> so tired, couldn't defend himself. They, they gathered around Ali Yun al-Akbar. They attacked Ali Yun al-Akbar and now this brave son of Abu Abdullah alayhi salam 
Then he said, Ya Aba, Haza Jaddi Rasulullah, Yaqra'uka Salaam. Oh, Father Abba, I see Rasulullah saying Salaam to you. My Father Rasulullah brought water from heaven to me, so don't worry if I didn't have water. Now Rasulullah brought water for me, and he's saying that we are waiting for you, Ya Hussein. When Abba Abdullah reached to the other shuhada, they say that Abu Abdullah came down from the horse. But when he came to Ali Yun al Akbar, Maqtal says, few steps from coming to Ali Yun al Akbar, he fell down from the horse on his knees coming to Ali. <laughs> Lady Zainab is watching this scene. <laughs> <laughs> Maqdal says, Lady Zainab ran towards Ali Yun al Akbar. Imam came with the horse, but Lady knew what is happening in the heart of Abu Abdullah. She reached to Ali <laughs> sooner than Imam al Hussein. She didn't want Abu Abdullah to see the severe body of Ali Yun al Akbar. She, she fell herself on Ali Yun al Akbar. She, she said, Ya. Khaya, Hussein John. She was worried for Abu Abdullah more than Ali Yun al Akbar. So she first said, Ya Khaya, Wabna Khaya. She was worried for Abu Abdullah. She is worried that Hussein will die in here, seeing the severe body of Ali Yun al Akbar. Allah will not allow Allah al Qawm al Zalimin, and say, Allah will not allow أي منغلب ينغلبون لا هي بحقيقة أبي عبد الله يا 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 الله أما يجيب المزدر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء 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 إلهي بحق علي الأكبر ولا ميك أور إمام إمام الأسر بليزد ويد أس ولا give us the chance and توفيق to serve our إمام ولا hasten in the reappearance of our إمام ولا accept his majalis from us ولا forgive the sins of all مرحومين look down on their shortcomings and their failures and their sins who passed away from the lovers of Amir al muminin from the first day till now. O oh Allah, forgive the sins and shortcomings of our Anwat, this Majlis. O oh Allah, forgive our sins, our shortcomings. O oh Allah, make us to be among the real followers and lovers of Abu Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. O oh Allah, Bahaq al Hussein, purify our hearts from all the sins and dirts. And give us the chance and tawfiq to enjoy the spiritual pleasure of being with Ahlul Bayt alayhim as salam. O oh Allah, keep our progeny, our children, our families with Ahlul Bayt. O oh Allah, forgive the sins and shortcomings of all brothers and sisters from Mu'mineen and Mu'minat. O oh Allah, those who had iltamas dua from the brothers and sisters who are sick, those who are in bad can the health condition, O oh Allah, give shifa to all of them. Bahaqqa Ali Yun al Akbar. O oh Allah, those brothers and sisters who have hajat, they said, Il Tamasada, many brothers and sisters, they said, Il Tamasada, they have hajat, we don't know their hajat, you know better than us. O oh Allah, provide all of them with their hajat. O oh Allah, Waj al Avaq, Wa Umurana Khaira, Bahaqqa Bi Abdullah al Hussein, Wa Barakat al Salawat, Allah Muhammad and Wa Allah Muhammad.